Well, one of our favorite guests is author John Miller, my friend. He's back with us today to talk about the concept revealed in his best-selling books, QBQ, which is Question Behind the Question, about personal responsibility, and the follow-up, which is called Flipping the Switch. Plus, he's going to give us an inside look at his next project, which is going to hit the bookstores early next year. We'll learn a little bit about that as we go along, too. But always good to have John Thank Miller you. with us. John, good to have you, man. Always good to see you, Dave. Thanks, Thanks. for joining us, brother. Glad you. you're here. Well, uh, a lot of our audience knows the story. They yeah. know I picked up this book in uh, in Memphis, Tennessee yeah. at the airport, read about half of it standing in the bookstore, finished it on the way home, called you immediately and said, we need yeah. this book, we need to talk about this. Start talking with you on the radio about it years ago. Mm -hmm. But this book has become almost part of the Dave Ramsey uh, series, if you will, and it's a yeah. book we requ have required reading inside of our organization. And it's all about just personal responsibility, which really with the mentality that's out there in our culture right now with a lot of trends, this idea of taking responsibility, as my dad used to say, you shot at Tarzan, you eat it. You know, these, these <laughs> kinds of things, right. you know, it's your problem to fix your problem. Uh, right. It's such a novel concept, that, that, and it's so foreign to, to what you see reported yeah. on the news, right. and, and on, on, you know, even on our own network here, it just it blows the mind. So talk about QBQ, sure. what, it is it, what is it for those that don't know? Yeah, right. Well, thanks for having me on again, Dave. Personal accountability is the core message behind QBQ. It all started back in uh, the 90s when I was selling leadership training to corporations, just calling on executives and, uh, and dealing with some high-level people every day and running training sessions. And sat in these sessions, I, and I, I heard all kinds of questions like, uh, why do we have to go through all this change? And when is someone going to train me? And, and uh, why can't I get more support around here? And when will that department do their job right? And I sat back, and I can still remember it. I sat in, in the back of many of these training rooms. I thought, there's something wrong with these questions. And then I one day came up with this phrase, the question behind the question. And the market shortened it to the QBQ, because you know the market loves acronyms. So I went out and started teaching it, and people called it the QBQ, and I said, well, that's great. And I started teaching, let's turn those questions around. So instead of asking, you know, why do we have to go through all this change, let's ask, how can I adapt? Instead of asking, when will that department do their job right, let's ask, you know, how can I help them do their job, and what can I do today to be my very best? So I started teaching it, and it just kind of caught on, and it's all about personal accountability and taking ownership and responsibility, all the stuff you believe in, and how, how can you be debt-free? How can you live like nobody else so we can live like nobody else unless we take personal accountability? So there's a, as you know, there's a wonderful um, marriage between what you teach every day and what I teach in personal accountability and the, uh, the two books there, QBQ and Flipping the Switch. Absolutely. So talk about some of the market trends that you're seeing out there, because this book really addresses kind of three negative areas, victim mm, thinking, right. procrastination. Talk about those areas and then talk about what you're seeing in the trends of the market. Well, we're seeing a lot of the, one of the trends, of course, is entitlement thinking. And that's not new. That's been around for a long time. As human beings, we become entitled quite easily. You know, I'm, I'm self-employed. Sometimes I think a company should hire me just because I've called on them for three years. And that's entitlement thinking. I've got to earn the right to work with a client. But as I go out and teach this to mostly corporations, some churches now, nonprofit groups, you just, you hear it all the time, well, I deserve, I'm entitled, uh, people should bail me out, uh, I need to get more help. Instead of saying, well, wait a minute, I made choices. I mean, to think that sometimes the consumer makes choices and then blames the lender, it just blows my mind. You know, we, we talk about Wall Street greed. Well, what about consumer greed? I know that offends some people, but, uh, you know, when you got people making 50000 a year buying half-million-dollar homes and then finding out they can't pay the mortgage, then blaming the lender, there's something wrong with that picture. And I know you teach against this stuff every day, but when I go out and do my material on personal accountability and I say something like, what about the consumer choices? What can I do to own my choices? How can I stand on personal responsibility? At least in the heartland, we get some uh, really big applause to those comments. Now, I was out in Nebraska and everybody applauds because deep down inside, everybody agrees personal accountability is still a great idea and it still works but we're fighting some headwinds right now in terms of our society about entitlement thinking and bailing me out and all the stuff you talk about but you know i'm going to stand on personal accountability and keep teaching it and i do enjoy being a contrarian you're a contrarian it's fun actually to, to to swim upstream and teach something that right now some people are saying no 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 we got to go the other direction and i'm still out here saying no personal accountability it's the answer well, government is not the answer. That's right. Um, waiting on your Congress to fix your life, your president to fix your life, yeah. is not going to That's happen. Right. You got a long wait. <laughs> and, That's right. Uh, um, you know, if you wait on them to fix your retirement, you wait on mm -hmm. them to fix your health care. Here's a plan. Yeah. Go fix it. Yeah, go fix it. And, Take and, responsibility. You know, it's an old idea, and, and yet it's it is the it core. It is an old idea. You know, it's kind of 
one of the things I, I, I found with people when I'm dealing with them on money on this kind of an issue is there's kind of this moment that happens where people grow up. Yes. It is kind That's of right. a growing up thing. I'm going well, to take responsibility for me and mine and my future. It's kind of a grown up thing to say versus daddy, mommy, yeah. please take care of me, whether it's the nanny state right. or whether it's actually, you know, mommy and daddy still taking care of me. That's right. I mean, That's at right. what point do you become a grown up? Part yeah. of that is you learn to delay pleasure. And part of that is you learn to take responsibility for your own actions. That's right. And, and, and for your actions, which are uh, born out of our choices. And so we have to decide, you know, every day, all day long, I have, I have the right to think. I have the right to choose. I can make better choices. I can make lousy choices. And what QBQ and Flipping the Switch are all about is they're really tools to help people make better choices. So when others drop the ball or things go against us or possibly we're having financial problems, uh, we can step back and say, wait a minute, how did I get here? Well, I didn't get here because of some external influence usually. It's usually, uh, if you look back, it's a series of choices that I made. And it's just really so exciting. It really is. When people say, I own it. I got myself here. My decisions have directed me to my destination. Life is based on choice, not chance. Those are wonderful ways of living. And once we decide to live that way, there's really actually a lot less stress. I think there's a lot of stress in playing victim when I'm waiting for others to bail me out and save me. There's no power there. I have no personal power when I'm waiting for others asking, why is this happening to me? When I could be asking what we call the QBQ, the question behind the question. Hey, how can I move forward today? What can I do to make a difference? And, and it does happen at a different time in everybody's lives. Now, you'll meet 30-year-olds who haven't done this yet. You may 50, meet 50-year-olds who haven't done this yet. Oh, it's not chronological maturity. Yeah. It's just emotional age. maturity to, it, to accept responsibility for your own life. It's something internal in different people it happens at different times when they just say, darn it, I'm not going to blame. I'm not going to play victim. I'm not going to procrastinate. I'm going to ask the question behind the question. How can I res accept responsibility today and move on with my life and, and be better tomorrow than I was today? And that's what QBQ is all about. In a, in, in a sense, a switch flips. That's right. Yeah. We're flipping the switch. Flipping the switch. That's, that's what's happening. That's I'm gonna, right. I'm going to engage in a new thing. One of the things we always talk about is if you don't like the meal that you got called your life, Change the recipe. <laughs> right. you change the change recipe. recipe. Put yes, some new ingredients right. in. Mix it up. Cook it a different length. You yep. know. But you are right now in your marriage as a sum total of the decisions you've made to this point. Mm -hmm. You're not a victim. No. You know, you've caused this to be where it is. You are with your kids right. where you are right now. Right. And kids are a variable. You can't tell marriages are variable. But you could, there's a lot of cause effect there. There's a lot of sowing and reaping. And you are That's in your right. career. You are in your money. You are in your physical condition as a sum total of the choices you've made at right. this point. And I don't always like that because I, I would just no, assume right. be, you know, I wish it was easy to be 25 pounds lighter. <laughs> I, I really do wish it was easy. But I'm overweight it, it, by choice, right? Not, that's it. That's it. <laughs> that's I, right. I, I did get up and run this morning. Oh, but, good. you know, I mean, it was, you know, I chose to feed my face. Yes. Uh, nobody made me do it. It's not McDonald's fault because they have a high calorie menu. That's right. And trans fats. Right. And all this bunch of crap that's floating around out there. That's all about victim thinking weaving through the current market trends, isn't it? Well, yes, it is. And, you know, we talked uh, off camera about my daughter, Kristen, who works with me now, goes out and speaks on this material. And there's a story in QBQ that she tells, and it has a punchline. And the punchline is this, it's my mess. And I love watching her teach that. She's only 27 years old, but she's out there teaching it to young adults and adults and saying, if your relationships are not what they sh you'd like them to be, if your department is not as productive as you'd like it to be, if your finances are not what they should be, she always closes with, it's my mess. And of course, she's building off the story we tell in QBQ. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about is, you know, whether I'm, I'm employed in a corporation or I work in a church or I'm self-employed, coming back to personal accountability in these times in our economy, in our world right now, I think it's just a stellar thing to do. It just sets people apart when they say, I won't play victim, I won't point fingers, I'll take responsibility. It's just really good stuff. I teach a small business course called Entree Leadership, and I always tell those guys, if you ever catch yourself saying, Oh, I've got horrible employees. <laughs> you know, whose fault is that? Who you, hired you know, them? You hired them. <laughs> you hired them. Worse than that, you kept them. <laughs> you, you kept know? them, too. And so, right. I mean, my gosh, you know, clean house. Well, here's what's amazing. When you look at, like, a retail chain, different branches, you can have a lousy manager in a great location have bad results, and you can have a great manager in a lousy location and have great results. And it all comes down to the ownership that person takes for the shop that they're running. I mean, this is nothing new. For 2,000 years, you know, personal accountability has just been a great idea. We just happen to put it in a couple of books. And, and, it took and it's off, fun to teach. Course. So if people only get one idea 
from this interview and from these books sure. to take away? What's what's the big what's the big one idea? Well, most of us are running around trying to fix other people. You've got managers thinking they can motivate their people. You've got employees complaining about their manager. You've got spouses, uh, you know, pointing fingers at each other. You've got uh, dads saying, you know, why does my son want to be a musician? I want him to be a physician. And we've got this desire to fix others. And I think the number one result when I teach corporately or people read the book is people walk away saying, you know, I've been trying to fix this person, I'm done, I'm gonna let it go, and today I'm gonna ask how can I improve myself? If I'm a manager, how can I be a better coach? You know, if I'm a father, how can I be a better dad? These are just great questions. So the number one takeaway is people tend to say, I'm done trying to change others, I'll work on me. Mm. That's huge. Good stuff. It's weird though. As soon as you say that, when you're reading this, it happened yeah. to me. Yeah. As soon as you say that, okay, I'm going to work on me, but I sure know somebody needs to read uh, this book. All the time, yeah. <laughs> and that's why about a third of the way through the book, we say, who are you really thinking about right now? And people have emailed me and said, oh, I was thinking of somebody who needed this book. Yeah, well, I made all my team members read it, so I don't know, I know what, you that, did. what that what that what that <laughs> means. You. But it's, yeah, I'm going to fix everybody. That's yeah, okay. That, Spread no, the word. No, we wanted to weave that that in as a core value in our organization that it is your job. Yes, it it's is. your job. Whatever it is, right. it's your job. Right. I don't care what it is. I mean, I don't care if it fits your job description. I don't care what's going on. It's your job. The customer's your job. Right. Serving people is your job. Right. If you happen to be in the graphic arts department, a chair needs moving. Move the chair. Yes, that's right. You know, it's not hard. Yeah. That's right. You don't have to call somebody in well, maintenance to do that. And, and, and you, you use the key word organization. And that's what the next book's about. We've titled it Outstanding. One word, Outstanding. And the subtitle, 47 Ways to Make Your Organization Exceptional. 47. And 47 ways, and you're going to read every chapter, Dave. Not 48. Uh, not 48. <laughs> exactly 47. And we're going to send you a book, and you can read every chapter. And all this is is about people throughout an organization make decisions that make an organization lousy, or make an organization exceptional. Outstanding, we call them. And I've been in this business since 1986, and as I was telling you earlier, I've seen some companies that do it right, and some companies and organizations and churches and nonprofits and government groups that do it wrong. And so what we're hoping is that the new book, Outstanding, will do for organizations what QBQ and Flipping the Switch have done for individuals, mm -hmm. helping the organization now be stellar. And these books, I believe, help individuals be stellar. They have been. They sure have been. Yes. John, it's good to have you Thank again. Thank you, Dave. Thanks for being I've here. I've enjoyed man. it. Folks, the book is QBQ, and you've got to read this. It's an absolute must read. Obviously, it's a very quick read, okay? And you can purchase it at a discount right now at our website at DaveRamsey.com. Also, be sure and check out John's website at QBQ.com. He is a nationally known speaker. He speaks in companies and corporations all across America. You can arrange for him or his daughter uh, at QBQ.com. You can arrange for mass discounts on these books if you want from him as well. So lots more calls and emails coming right up. Don't go away. You're watching The Dave Ramsey Show on the Fox Business Network. Right.